The next item of business is consideration of business motion number 11981 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau setting out a revision of the business programme for today. Any member who wishes to speak against the motion should press the request to speak button now. And I call on Joe Fitzpatrick to move motion number 11981. Minister. Moved. Thank you. No member has asked to speak against the motion. Therefore, I now put the question to the Chamber. The question is that motion number 11981, in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick, be agreed to. Are we all agreed? The motion is therefore agreed to. We now move to topical questions. Question number one, Jenny Mara. To ask the Scottish Government whether it will provide an update on how the NHS is dealing with Ebola. Cabinet Secretary Shona Robinson. The First Minister will be making a statement on this matter shortly. I'm sure that the whole chamber will be holding Pauline Kafferke and her family and their thoughts at this difficult time. And will wish to join me in thanking all of the health professionals who have been involved in her care. Jenny Mara. I thank the, the Cabinet Secretary for her answer, and we do indeed echo those sentiments, and Kezia Dugdale will respond to the, to the First Minister to those sentiments later. I would like to ask the Health Secretary, Presiding Officer. The um, Health Secretary in England and Wales has procured an additional uh, 75,000 PPE Ebola suits uh, for safety of their workers. I would like to ask the Health Secretary how many of these PPE Ebola suits we have in Scotland and how many isolation, sorry, isolation beds we have in Scotland. Cabinet Secretary. Okay, um, can I uh, say to, to Jenny Mara and the, the rest of the, the Chamber that, of course, um, we are in very close contact with all NHS boards regarding their stocks of personal protective equipment to ensure that it's available and accessible. In addition, we have a national stockpile that boards can draw on as a reserve, and we'll continue to ensure that boards have access to uh, personal protective equipment for safe Ebola preparedness and will maintain our uh, national uh, stockpile. Um, in terms of the, um, the, the availability um, of um, support um, in uh, Scotland for uh, uh, any cases, we have established three regional units for the management of possible or confirmed Ebola um, in Glasgow, in Edinburgh and in Aberdeen. There are 14 negative pressure rooms uh, across these units and more than 50 isolation rooms. Um, of course, um, the reason that um, Pauline Kavriki was uh, transferred to the Royal Free was because it provides um, a high-level isolation unit and uh, it is regarded as being the best facility uh, for the whole of the UK with the high level of expertise in treating patients uh, with this type of disease. Um, but we should be assured that certainly within Scotland, as was the case at the, the Brownlee Hospital, uh, we have the ability to care for Ebola patients. Uh, but uh, it was quite right that the patient was referred and transferred to the Royal Free Hospital for her ongo ongoing care. Question number two, Sandra White. Thank, yes. thank you, President Officer. I'm sure we all wish to join together in offering our deepest sympathies to all involved in this terrible tragedy and thank the emergency services for all they have done. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government whether it will provide an update on events following the bin lorry crash in George Square on the 22nd of December. Minister Michael Mathis. Uh, firstly, President Officer, I would like to express my condolences to the families, friends and loved ones of the six people who lost their lives. Jacqueline Morton, Stephanie Tate, Gillian Ewing, Erin McQuaid, Lorraine Sweeney and Jack Sweeney. Our thoughts are with them at this difficult time. Whilst uh, nothing can provide comfort in such tragic circumstances, I can advise the Chamber that a full police investigation under the direction of the Crown Office and the Procurator Fiscal Service began immediately after the incident occurred. Interim reports to the Crown Office were received on the 24th and 28th of December. A formal report on the emerging findings of the investigation is due to be submitted by Police Scotland to the Crown Office by the end of January. The Crown Office must wait for all of the necessary inquiries to be completed before it can come to a final decision. 
I have been advised that the Crown will consider that report and uh, by the end of February will provide further details as to the timescale for any further investigations that may be required. President Officer, my, fi my finish by thanking all of those who helped in response to this terrible incident. The response of the emergency services was exemplary. NHS staff have provided the injured with the best care and attention possible. St Andrews First Aid volunteers and members of the public administered first aid and local cafes and restaurants provided food and drink to those caught up in this terrible incident. We have yet again seen the incredible spirit of the people of Glasgow. The city and indeed the whole of Scotland has pulled together to support those who have been most affected by this incident. Sandra White. Uh, th thank you, Cabinet Secretary, and may I echo uh, Cabinet Secretary said in regards to the emergency services and others, uh, not just in Glasgow, but throughout Scotland, who came forward with their help. Uh, I welcome the fact that the initial report will be uh, produced shortly, as the Cabinet Secretary said. Can I also ask the Cabinet Secretary if this report will be made public and whether a fatal accident in inquiry will follow? Cabinet Secretary. Um, I do recognise uh, uh, the member's particular interest in this matter, given, it the, uh, given her constituents' interest in uh, this issue. Um, the initial report uh, by the Police to the Procurator Fiscal will not be uh, within the public domain as it requires to be considered confidentially by uh, the Crown Office and the Procurator Fiscal Service. Uh, with relation to the possibility of a fatal accident inquiry, any decision on whether there should be a fatal accident inquiry uh, is a matter solely for the Lord Advocate, and it would not appropriate, be appropriate for uh, government to comment on that matter. Mm -hmm. The other thing I want to reassure the member and other members in the chamber is that uh, special staff from the Crown Office and the Procurator Fiscal Service uh, will keep the families advised on progress uh, with regards to the investigation and will provide them with support at every stage of the investigation as it moves forward. Ms. White. Thank you, President Officer, and I appreciate the Cabinet Secretary's response and reply, obviously, to the families be kept fully up to date in, in what is happening. In regards to the fatal accident inquiry, I uh, just want to ask if a fatal accident inquiry was granted, uh, what action the Scottish Government would take to ensure that it is undertaken as expediently as possible? Cabinet Secretary. Well, uh, as I mentioned, the decision on uh, holding a fatal accident inquiry is a matter solely for the Lord Advocate, and it would also be for the Procurator Fiscal uh, to apply to the Sheriff to hold an FEI uh, when investigations are complete. Um, the Scottish Government does not have a role to play in setting down the time frame for any fatal accident inquiry. I am sure that the Member and others in the Chamber will recognise that it is essential that a proper and thorough investigation is carried out. Uh, uh, so that the brief families uh, do find out what happened uh, and it would be counterproductive to introduce an artificial deadline uh, which could mean that the investigation does not reach a satisfactory uh, conclusion in establishing uh, the facts around the incident itself. Uh, but I can assure the member is that uh, the families will be kept informed of this whole matter moving forward and the Crown Office uh, will continue to provide them with the support and assistance they require. Thank you. Question number three, Liam MacArthur. Thank you very much. To ask the Scottish Government what involvement it will have in the investigation into the sinking of the cargo vessel uh, Semfjord in the Pentland Firth. Cabinet Secretary, Richard Lockhead. As the Parliament will be aware, the upturned Kemfjord was discovered on Saturday afternoon by the MV Rossi ferry en route to Aberdeen. Unfortunately, despite an extensive search on land and at sea, the eight crewmen from the vessel have not been found. The Maritime and Coast Guard Agency have indicated that the search will not be resumed unless new information comes to light. I would like to extend our appreciation to the crews of the aircraft, lifeboats and naval vessel that undertook the initial search and rescue, in addition to the MV Rossi and her passengers and crew who are first on the scene, and also the Northern Lighthouse Board vessel Pharos. Also, I would like to note the efforts of the volunteer Coast Guard teams involved in the search operation as well. The vessel has now been located lying in the seabed in the eastern approaches to Pentland Firth. The investigation into the sinking of the Kenfjord is a matter for the Marine Accident Investigation Branch, who we understand are undertaking their initial assessments at this stage. 
Circle North Link as operators of the ferry are already fully cooperating with the MAIB in the early stages of this investigation. And of course, our thoughts at this time remain with the families of the missing crew. Liam MacArthur. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that uh, response? I believe the whole chamber will want to send its condolences uh, to the families of the seven Poles and one Filipino who appear to have lost their lives in this awful tragedy. Uh, we should, as the Cabinet Secretary said, acknowledge and thank all those involved in the search operation over the weekend, including the RNLI uh, Coast Guard and, of course, the crew of the North Link Ferry, the Ross Sea, who first spotted the capsized uh, vessel and, and indeed uh, avoided a potentially nasty collision. The MAIB has begun its investigations and it is, as the Cabinet Secretary has acknowledged, early days. But uh, does he accept that many of my in my constituency and elsewhere are asking why it took so long to establish that a ship of this size entering a busy stretch of water like the Pentland Firth had run into serious difficulties? Does he agree that this initial delay and the apparent lack of an EPIRB signal uh, inevitably hampered the search and rescue efforts? And further, does he believe that it may be time to look at enhancing the vessel traffic system covering these important and busy waters. Cabinet Secretary. Well, due to some of the, the issues that Lee MacArthur quite rightly raises in the Chamber, uh, the Scottish Government are in close contact with the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency to discuss with them the progress the investigation will make and what issues will be taken into account. And of course, I, I'm sure everyone in the Chamber will want to ensure that any lessons that can be learnt are learnt. But until we know the outcome of the investigation, of course, we are not really in a position to comment on the exact circumstances surrounding the tragic loss of this vessel. Mr MacArthur. Thank you. Can I uh, thank the Cabinet Secretary for that further response? And I realise he's constrained in what he can say with the MEIB investigation underway. But does he agree uh, with me that every reasonable effort uh, should be made in due course to receive, uh, retrieve the bodies of those who appear to have perished on board the Kempfjord? Uh, and if so, will he make uh, appropriate representations to the vessel's owners to that effect? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I thank Liam MacArthur for also raising that important point. Uh, and at the moment, these are some of the issues we are discussing with the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency. Uh, I understand today that the discussions, of course, that will be taking place between the owner of the vessel, the insurers and the various agencies involved will be considering such issues. And we await the outcome of these deliberations. Mike McKenzie. I wonder if the Cabinet Secretary shares my concerns regarding claims that have been made that the emergency towing vessel uh, the tug Heracles took two and a half hours to respond to the sinking of the same fjord. And will uh, he join me in calling on UK ministers to investigate these claims? Cabinet Secretary. Well, of course, uh, we all recognise the important role that the emergency towing vessels play in Scottish waters. And again, the question raised by Mike McKenzie is also a question that we have asked the Maritime Coast Guard Agency to, to clarify. I would, of course, remind the Chamber and Mike McKenzie that, of course, many rescue services were deployed very quickly and took part uh, in the search and rescue operation. However, if there are questions to be asked, it's really important that we do ask those questions and get satisfactory answers. Question number four, John Mason. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what contact it has had with the administrators of CityLink Limited. Minister Fergus Shewing. Uh, Presiding officer, I spoke with the administrators Ernst and Young at the earliest possible opportunity to offer support from the Scottish Government for the business and uh, for employees who may be facing redundancy. I again spoke with the administrators yesterday when they advised there was no future for the business as a going concern. I reaffirmed our offer of support for affected employees through our PACE initiative. I met with representatives of the RMT union this morning to discuss how best we might support affected employees and I've asked both verbally and in writing that the administrators assist us in contacting affected employees directly to provide a programme of tailored support. PACE will, as soon as practical, hold four or five events in the areas where the company operated depots. I've also written to Joe Swinson, MP, Minister in the UK Government's Department for Business, Innovation and Skills, to seek her support in progressing claims for the workforce redundancy payments as speedily as possible through the Edinburgh Office of the Insolvency Service. John Mason. Hey, I thank the Minister for that positive reply. I just wonder what his consideration or the Government's consideration is of the timing of this announcement, if, if it had to be at Christmas, which seemed very unfortunate for the, the workers. Minister. Well, there's, there's probably no good time for a worker to learn that he or she has been made redundant 
But I must say, presiding officer, that having dealt with a very large number of cases over the last few years, uh, this case is particularly shocking that the news broke on Christmas Eve. And I think that's something which we very much all regret. Uh, and that's why it's extremely important that the administrators uh, uh, obtemper the undertaking which they said in a press release that they were to fulfill, namely that employees affected by redundancy will be offered appropriate advice and support and making claims for redundancy and notice pay. This morning I was advised by the RMT representatives Gordon Martin, Mick Hogg and Mick Ward that no advice or support of any practical sort was provided individually to any of the workers, which of course means that those forms are likely, in some cases, to have been filled in incorrectly. That, in turn, will lead to delays. And therefore, I am grateful that Mr Mason has raised this for his constituents, but also for all of the CityLink staff uh, of nearly 200 in Scotland, uh, so that they can receive the support that they have promised from the administrators and, indeed, from the former managers of CityLink themselves. Mr Mason. Yeah, I thank the Minister again for that. I mean, does he have any view as to why this company has been unsuccessful eh, when other companies in what is quite a competitive eh, market area eh, have been more successful? There are suggestions this company really has been badly run for quite a long time. Minister? Well, well that certainly is the suggestion clearly conveyed to me by the RMT, who mentioned several layers of management. It's not really for me to form a judgment that won't particularly help those who have lost their jobs. But I am determined, as the Minister for Business, to make sure that our PACE, uh, which is of course a task force, provide the support that is uh, very often of productive and constructive nature, uh, resulting in uh, around over two-thirds of workers who are made redundant finding other jobs within six months. That's why I discussed for about 90 minutes this morning uh, with uh, Mick, Mick and Gordon the appropriate arrangements that PACE will make and Margaret Souter and Callum McLean attended the meeting as well. They will be held in four or five areas in Scotland, uh, we hope in the third or fourth week in January. Intimation will be given to as many of the workers concerned. But here again, presiding officer, the practicality is that unless we know the names and addresses of the workforce and self-employed people, of whom there were several driving vans for which they paid, then it will be difficult for us to make sure that each of those individuals is able to attend these events convened for them. That too is why I re-emphasize the support that we need from Ernst and Young to ensure that this job is done properly and done without further delay. Siobhan McMahon. The situation with CityLink has had a knock-on effect on some small to medium-sized businesses, including a recruitment business within my own region. That is owed a considerable amount of money by CityLink. What action can the Scottish Government take to ensure that these businesses are supported at this time? Minister. Well, I'm very happy if Siobhan McMahon wants to write to me about any individual case to look at it as carefully as, as I can, plainly if credit has been extended to a company such as CityLink and it has gone into liquidation, then sadly all too often is that the reality is that the small company is left in the lurch and the debt must be written off. Sadly, that is the reality of the situation and I think it does uh, raise questions as to what exactly occurred in the last few months of the operation of CityLink. These are matters which I believe the RMT believe should be investigated and I've urged them to raise specific concerns with the administrator. Finally, it is of course the duty of the administrator inter alia to carry out such investigations as may be appropriate into the circumstances uh, which led to so many people, whether they be employees, contractors or small businesses, being left in the lurch on Christmas Eve. John Pentland. I understand that in some areas, such as London, CityLink workers are being offered jobs by other delivery firms who will be picking up businesses as a result of CityLink's de de demise. Can the Minister advise what contact the Scottish Government has had with firms in Scotland to encourage them to do likewise? Minister. I, I'm very sorry, I'm not sure that I caught all of Mr Pentland's question and I undertake to, to look again at it after uh, th this uh, debate and to speak to the member, of course, uh, if he wishes me so to do. Uh, what I would say is that we are making efforts uh, uh, working with the Job Centre to make sure that at each of the events that, we that I've described 
there will be appropriate uh, uh, presence of those who may be in a position to offer alternative work or jobs to those drivers who find themselves uh, on the dole as a result of the CityLink decision. Thank you. We now move to the next item of business, which is a statement by the First Minister on Ebola. The First Minister will take questions at the end of her statement, and there should therefore be.